All right, today we're gonna to be going over our new dual ball bearing unit. So we've been getting asked a lot of questions about the benefits, the upsides, the downsides, and what you should expect to see when you're upgrading the new dual ball bearing units. Well, we got both of them here in front of us today. We'll go over a little test real quick and see if you can tell the difference just by me spinning the wheel to see which one is a journal bearing versus which one is a ball bearing. All right, so it's pretty obvious that this is the ball bearing unit and this is the journal bearing unit. So what's the difference between a ball bearing and a journal bearing? Well, first, most turbos are journal bearing, or some people call them hydromatic bearings or sleeve bearings. It's a sleeve over a shaft that rides on oil film. So you have oil pressure that goes into the bearing. It centers the bearing, centers the shaft. That's what creates the lubrication. That's what the turbo spins on. But there's a lot of resistance when it comes to that. It causes a little bit of drag. Ball bearing units are ball bearings that ride in a race and they have much less resistance, which results in quicker spool up, uh, better response time, and a little bit more power. Not a lot more power, but you do get a little bit more power out of it. And today we have a customer that wants to upgrade from the already great Stage 2 KC300X to our new dual ball bearing unit of the turbo. We searched long and hard to find the perfect bearing for our turbos. We are working with a company out of Germany that actually makes the bearings in Japan that's used by many of the big OEs. It's the best bearing on the market so you know you have the best quality and the best longevity out of it. Now there are pluses and minuses to a ball bearing turbo. People ask me, well, why wouldn't I want a ball bearing turbo? One reason is it's more expensive. They do cost more to build and they are a lot more expensive to rebuild. They are rebuildable, but we won't be able to just send you out rebuild kits. You will have to send in the turbo to get rebuilt or order a new char. Another thing is they're a little bit more sensitive. What I mean by that is that oil clearance in there or that oil film creates a lot of forgiveness. If you get a little bit of debris that goes through your turbo, maybe you shut it down a little hot or you beat on them when cold, that oil is going to be forgiving. If you get a little gouge in your bearing, you'd be surprised. I pulled off bearings that have way too much play in them. They're totally gouged. The customer didn't even know. That oil film, although it has the downside of having more resistance, it does allow you a little bit more forgiveness when it comes to turbo damage or turbo failure. With ball bearings, you don't get that. As soon as you get a little bit of damage to a ball bearing, it's all downhill from there. We've had a few ball bearing units fail and we've taken it apart and we've even found like little bits of debris of a shop towel or some silicone that went through the engine. And what happens is it'll get wedged in between the ball and the race and the ball skids, damages the race, and then it's done. You'll hear the damage forever and then it just gets worse and worse and worse. So where a journal bearing unit might last for years with a little bit of bearing damage. You might hear it a little bit, or you might hear a little bit of a noise on the wind down, but it'll still continue to run because it runs on that film of oil. Ball bearing turbos are not like that. As soon as you get a little bit of damage to the bearings, they will fail quickly. That's not to say that dual ball bearing turbos are unreliable. You just have to be a little more conscious on how you treat your truck and your turbo. You don't want to start it up and beat on it while it's cold or shut it down while it's really hot. You want to keep on top of your oil changes and make sure you're not blowing boots all the time or have giant boot leaks or exhaust leaks because you can damage these bearings and they are expensive to replace. Where this turbo, years down the road, if you need to buy a rebuild kit, it's cheap, it's easy to rebuild, usually less than $100 for just the bearing kit. Where the ball bearing turbo is gonna be much more expensive. You're gonna have to send it in, you're gonna have to have it gone through. So there are the pluses and minuses to it. But today, we have a customer that's gonna get on the dyno. We'll show you the before and after results. All right, we just got off the dyno and let's check out these results. As you can see, the dual ball bearing turbo spools up much faster. In some areas of the graph, you can see it's over 200 RPMs quicker spool up, 200 foot pounds of torque, and 100 horsepower. Now, overall peak horsepower gains was only 13 horsepower. So the dual ball bearing does help a little bit on the top end, but the main focus of the dual ball bearing upgrade is gonna be spool up, which means you're gonna have better drivability, quicker response, you'll tow better and run cooler EGTs in that lower RPM rate. And whenever you get on the throttle, you'll just instantly feel that quicker increase in boost. On top of the 200 foot pounds of torque increase, you basically get all throughout the lower RPM band. It does increase peak torque, from 967 to 1041 and lowers peak torque by over uh, 100 RPM. As you can see from the dyno results, the spool up is incredible. It spools way faster. A couple hundred RPM sooner, you get a lot more torque out of it and a lot more lower end horsepower. You do get a little bit more top end power, but it's not drastic. That's not why you're buying a ball bearing unit. You're driving a ball bearing unit because you want the quickest response time off the line. 
All right, guys, remember to like, comment, subscribe, and if you have a question on your truck, make sure to reach out to us today.